Okay, we'll start. <laughs> Hi, Marcel and Alex. Do you hear us? Yes, I hear you. Yay. Everybody. Hello. Hey, Nathan. <laughs> Good to see you again. How are you guys? <laughs> How's it going? Good. Hey. How many people? How many people at the event? How many people showed up? A lot. I think maybe 150. I guess total. Really? Well, because we couldn't, we couldn't see the the. It was just pointing at the stage. I didn't even think it was a big room. Hey, John. Hey, hey, just so you know, you're on the screen. Everybody's watching you. That's totally fine. Nice. I, I, I think my hair looks great today. So It does look great. It usually looks I great. Marcel. I don't really have any, so it's fine. So I think we should get rolling. I know it's late over there. So let's let's um, get started on, on the, the workshop. Yeah? Sure. Sounds good. How many people do we have in this developer workshop? Uh, Here, let's, just, let's just introduce you. Wow. Hey, guys. <laughs> Amazing. Is that Phil? <laughs> hey. How's it going? <laughs> and leave it so you can just watch them. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, so can you share screen and get rolling? Yes, let's uh, go. Okay, you guys see everything all right? Yeah. Awesome. So basically what I've built over the past uh, few weeks is this dApp with a contract that helps you offset the transactions of either your wallet or any contract or address of your choice. And I'm going to kind of walk you through it. And then we can talk about maybe the behind the scenes, how it works and what we would like to extend it with uh, later. And maybe even you guys would like to take a shot at extending it. Um, once you connect your wallet, this is what you see, first of all. Um, and if you click on load your transactions, it basically uses a polygon scan API to see all your transactions. Um, I'm not sure if you guys see this part right here. Let me make this small. Cool. Um, and right here, you have different stats, like, for example, how much gas all your transactions have ever done how much TCO2 you've ever uh, offset, how much TCO2, how, how much kilograms of CO2 your transactions uh, that are not offset have emitted and how much TCO2 it would cost to offset them. And here you have a, a table with each and every transaction that I have ever made from this wallet. And basically you can either see if it's uh, offset or not. You can see it's nonce, the gas used and a link to its polygon scan. Now, normally, uh, for example, I can offset my few transactions here that are not offset because I've already deposited some TCO2. But as a newcomer to this DAP, you would have to go to deposit. And you would, first of all, I mean, if you have TCO2, you can deposit TCO2. But if you don't, you can deposit BCT. So let's deposit one BCT to see how it all works. Um, are you guys familiar with Solidity? All of you, um, I think you are, right? So basically this uses the safe transfer from method from the safe ERC20 contract. So it will actually ask you for two requests from MetaMask, one to approve the transaction and another one to actually sign the transaction. You can see right here. And when this, once this is done, you will see that my balances actually reflect me adding one extra BCT to this contract. So here we are. You see now I have four and a half BCT. So next up, you go to the redeem page. 
and you do a similar process, you can pick from the available um, TCO2s. These right here are the only TCO2s that are within the BCT pool on Mumbai. So you can pick any of them and click on redeem. It was gonna take you to the loading screen. It's gonna give you some of them, right? Um, I'm not gonna redeem because you guys, uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory and I don't want you guys to wait too much. So let's go back to the dashboard. I load my transactions again and I can pick any of the TCO2s that I have in here and I can just offset them. Now, <clears throat> as I said, you can actually look here. Now all of them are offset. These things are reset back to zero and everything worked just fine. If you want to offset, for example, another um, address, you can go either to the offset uh, tab right here, or you can use this button, want to offset another address transactions. And let's take this specific address that I found randomly on Polygon and let's paste it in here. Let's load its transactions. It actually has a lot of transactions. It has like 7,000, but we can load up to 200,000 or literally up to uh, any number, but it's gonna take a while, right? To load all of them. And in here you see the same view as you saw for my transactions, but obviously uh, these are whoever this guy is <laughs> transactions and you can offset them just the same. Uh, you have to deposit um, this amount of TCO2 or redeem it, and then you can offset it and that's about it. Um, I'm sure you guys have questions about how it works behind the scenes. Like for example, one question I really thought you guys might ask is, um, how did we actually come up with uh, this emissions factor, right? And basically me and the team, we did some research and we found that Polygon claims that they use uh, precisely 0.003 kilograms of CO2 per transaction on the average transaction, of course. And we used that number. We tried to look for peer reviewed um, numbers, but we couldn't find any so far. We're still looking around. We're trying to, to improve this part of the DAP and to add that. But for right now, we're using 0.003 kilograms per transaction. We did increase that by 20% to 0.0036, just to have a margin for error. Um, yeah, and next up, what we wanna add to this uh, DAP, basically, we wanna add a sushi swap integration so that you can come in with USDC or Matic and then all within this DAP, change it for BCT, redeem it, and offset your transactions. And one particular thing that me and Marcel talked about and we really wanna implement, it was his idea, um, is to have it all happen in one step because you see right now, you have to go through all the steps and it can become kind of bad UX. It would be far nicer if you could just click on one button and it happens all at the same time. Um, yeah. That's pretty much the demo. Do you guys have any questions about how it works or what we intend to do with it? Somebody in there has a question I can see. How, how do you track which transaction for offset or no? Is that on blockchain? Or is that somewhere else? Um, yeah, so the way we track that is by tracking the last offset nonce for each address. So you can see right here that this is uh, this is actually the transaction that uh, happened when I offset my transactions. So this one didn't get offset because it happened after we registered this as the last nonce. So that's really how it works. It registers the last offset nonce. Is there a way to offset transactional Ethereum, which I guess is much more common than To offset on Ethereum instead? Yeah. Uh, no, as of right now, this is only available on Mumbai. Is there a pass to it? Or... Um, can you guys give him a microphone or something? I'm hearing yeah. him. Uh, I, 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 can just, I can just repeat it. He was asking 
what's the uh, plan? Like what's the path moving forward um, to support that? Um, so we actually didn't talk about uh, deploying it on Ethereum yet. We did talk about integrating it maybe with Polygon because they do have, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Polygon, they have like that checkpoint transaction every 30 minutes, which happens also in Ethereum. So I think long-term we do have plans to maybe put, use this on Ethereum too. Um, but we likely will still use Polygon to offset transactions from Ethereum just because it's cheaper. Like the average from what we have found, the average uh, transaction in Ethereum actually emits 95 kilograms of CO2. So we would rather use Polygon to offset Ethereum transactions when we actually get to that. But that's kind of a long-term-ish uh, thought. No. Um, did you did you guys get that question? No, not at all. Okay, do you mind just coming out again? So, do you have like a, a plan for an API? Um, API, I don't know, uh, for uh, using this application on chain the moment you mint, a, a, for example, an NFT. I have an NFT contract, a lazy minting. I, I mint the NFT and at the same time goes here and offset the carbon and gets on chain in the same moment. You have something like that? Um, no, we didn't talk about this, but we did talk about a way to schedule. So for example, one of the ideas that we had and we talked about is that you could, for example, set the DAP to once a month, uh, automatically schedule all your, automatically offset all your transactions from the uh, DCO2 that you have within the DAP. So technically, if you know you're gonna uh, have free, free NFTs a month or whatever, you could schedule it once a month, it checks all your transactions and it does its thing. So just put the contract address and you need to do this regularly in order to be offsetting all the transactions that that contract is doing, right? Yes, you would, you would have to do this regularly okay. right now. Understood, thanks. The, the very important part I think is that if you're doing this on, on um, Polygon is that it actually doesn't use a lot of, uh, it doesn't emit a lot of CO2. So like, maybe you're gonna offset once every few months because the reality is that like right now one BCT is what, four or five dollars? So even if you do use uh, up a full ton or two of, uh, of uh, CO2 and you have to offset two, one or two, one or two or three TCO2s, does it really make sense to do it every day or every week? Like you could do it every few months and it wouldn't really be an issue, right? Well, I have, I have another question. So uh, it seems to me like in this platform, anyone can offset any contract, right? Um, yep. Is there any sort of, because I'm thinking, right? If you own a, a smart contract uh, in, your, in you know, a wallet address, is there any way, is there any benefit to the, the contract owner, uh, either in terms of, you know, proving that you offset it to your own contract, or is there an additional functionality beyond just, you know, any one of the general public being able to offset? So like, um, this I think would make sense to mention the NFT you, you Marcel talked to me about yesterday. Yeah, Christopher, can you hear me? I have some audio issues right now. Uh, we can hear you, but your voice is uh, quite loud. I don't know if you can like, maybe if you unpair your headphones. Is that your laptop? Better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, exactly. So if I understand the question right, it's about like who can claim that they have 
offset who or like who, who can claim that they contributed to protecting um, planet Earth. Um, and exactly, we have a retirement feature right now. This is like what's what's happening here. Um, the TCO2s um, are being retired and the tokens are being burned. What is not yet live is uh, the feature to, to mint um, a retirement certificate. Um, and we hope it will come live in a couple of weeks. Um, and that feature will allow anyone that retired to specify um, a message for example, um, that they have offset for, for this specific reason. And um, yeah, the certificate will be an NFT and it will show um, who has offset um, what amount of, of, of CO2. And you could basically, if you offset someone else's uh, contract or someone else's wallet, um, you could claim obviously these, these offsets um, for yourself. And, um, or you could say, um, this is like a gift for someone else so there's like a lot, a lot of flexibility there does that answer your question uh yeah that, that's helpful um i'm thinking of like the scenario where like someone has a project let's say simplify it nft project you're the contract owner you want to offset the emissions of the minting or whatever but in the future there will be more offsets or sorry more emissions because of the transactions right so my question is if you're the contract owner you do want to have some sort of so in this case, the NFT that proves that you offset your own contract. But moving forward, um, I guess I, I'm just trying to think of a scenario where more people come in and basically hijack the offset. You know, so I, I guess I'm I'm just wondering. Obviously, that's good, but I'm also figure, uh, trying to understand: is there any benefit for the contract owner specifically? But I guess your, your yeah, question ended. Yeah. yeah, I think you just got to get creative. In the end, it's like almost like a donation to the planet, right? So if somebody offsets your contract and then you decide as a contract owner, you still want to claim that you have offset as well. You can still offset it again, right? Because um, that is strictly not like via this app, it's not tr tracked on chain, I would say that it's it's like entered via the, the front end. And in the end, no, like actually, the, it's, it's on the blockchain. So if I, if I check, for example, my wallet right now, this is my wallet. From, if you yeah, check okay. from yeah. your wallet, it's, it's still offset. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was maybe misphrased. Um, what I'm saying is that like in the TCO2s, like the TCO2s are agnostic to that, right? Like a TCO2 does not know what it's being burned for, what, what is actually offsetting. A TCO2 being burned does not know if it's burned for... Uh, a flight or if it's burned for to offset an ethereum transaction it, it could be anything right and um with the nfts you have to you have the possibility to like burn uh, tco2s and link that to like an event that you then determine right there's like an entity that does the retirement and you can specify a beneficiary wallet or a beneficiary contract and you can also leave a message but like the the actual burning or the, the whole, like deletion of, of such TCO2 is agnostic to what, what it's being used for. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Cool. I don't think there's any more questions. Yeah, well, yeah. it's possible. Definitely. What if, 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 if you have like a function that we could add to a contract, so if, every time the contract does a transaction, the owner of the wallet can choose if they can offset. I don't know if that can be made in some agency actually, but um technically there is a POC that exists right now. Um let me see. There is a POC that I have created for this um before creating the DAP and before creating the contract offsetter that we have right now. And technically, you could look at this and use it to extend your contract so that you have the different functions that handle the, the offset and the tracking of the footprint. Um, but it's not really the main thing we wanted to present today. But, but yeah, you could use it. It's in this, um, in this uh, GitHub repo right here. And if you actually need to check out the GitHub repo, for either the DAP itself or for the contracts. In the help page right here, you have a demo with a video on YouTube right here, at which does the demo that I've done earlier and the repos to everything plus the contract on Polygon Scan.
Other questions? Yeah. Do you mind just coming up here? Uh, so they can hear you. Thank you. More so, this is Mark Johnson. I know we've talked about this a ton before, um, but I wanted to see it. What's up, man? Uh, I wanted to circle back on the methodology. You guys mentioned that you're using um, some figure like 0 0.003 uh, kilograms of carbon of CO2 equivalent per uh, ton. Um, can you provide the link to that info or anything like that? Because I would love to know more about how Polygon is assessing their carbon footprint. Because it seems a little bit, you know, like yeah, just out uh, of linear type of number. Yeah. I mean, was just discussing that yesterday with Alex, and I, I assume that I mean, Alex, I think said that the number comes from Polygon. I assume the actual um, factor to be much higher, uh, just because like the whole staking system of Polygon is uh, happening on Ethereum mainnet, and um, so all the stake transactions are like proof of work transactions. Um, I also think that like technically, like a bridge transaction when somebody bridges from ETH mainnet onto Polygon. Um, but you'd say, okay, the first part of this bridging, the first the Ethereum transaction is like, that's Ethereum's business, but basically it's like people that want to bridge onto Polygon and maybe they should also be responsible for, for like offsetting the Ethereum part. Um, and then I think the, the factor like on average for all the transactions uh, would be, would be much higher. Um, but yeah, I think in general for, for proofs of stake networks is quite low. Um, there is a report um, by a new initiative, by a new research group that analyzes, uh, just recently analyzed uh, different proof of stake networks in, in terms of their, um, yeah, in terms of their um, emissions. And um, yeah, if many proof of stake networks just had like something in the, in the ballpark of like 100 or 200 tons. Um, for all their emissions, like um, for all the network emissions over the since, since their life. Um, so, the example, like Polkadot had like 73 tons of carbon since uh, going live. So, in general, probably most um, proof of stake networks are quite low on that number. So. <clears throat> About that number, I would like to just add that basically we know it's not uh, a perfect number. We know it's not peer reviewed. It's really just a claim made by Polygon that we added a, a margin for error of 20% on top. And we figured it's a good start, but it, it's not, uh, again, the number where we want to keep on using it. We want to look for more peer reviewed um, stuff and figure out a much better number than this one, which would be more accurate. Yeah, um, any questions at all? I don't think there's any more. Yeah, so if there's no more questions, I would just, um, did I mention that we want to integrate SushiSwap? I think I did, right? Yeah, that's one of the major things that we want to implement to make it basically as easy as possible to offset your content contracts or your wallet cool well, there are a question there's three more questions now so i uh, guess that was no, i don't see that <laughs> uh, do you guys have ideas for applications in mind that can be built on top of the i didn't hear it he's asking if we have any um, ideas for applications um to be built on top of this tooling just Curious by this tool, and you made specifically the contract offsetting, or like the two can in general. Yeah, but it seems like the contract offsetting could be applied to Okay. Yeah, he's curious specifically about the contract uh, offsetting, if there's any applications in mind. Um, on like applications that people could build on top of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well. No, not as far as I know. Like, I guess you guys, if in the hackathon, you could take a shot at implementing a sushi swap integration or um, a wrapper function that does all the deposit redeem offset thing all at once. But as far as I know, um, there's no ideas for anything to build on top of the, the contract offsetter contract. 
I, I think the potential application could be gamification in general, like so some metaverse and NFT projects, they could, for example, require you to um, maybe offset like the Aave mainnet contract in order to mint like the ultimate NFT, um, because that would be quite expensive um, instead of just like paying ETH or having it even as an additional requirement um, in order to like hunt or, or get that NFT. And then um, there's some metaverse projects that also like plan on plan on yeah, integrating with us that basically you, you grow like um, virtual trees that need to be fed with carbon. And um, I think in, in that same realm, there could be also applications where you have to offset maybe your own wallet first in order to um, get access to some level. Yeah, uh, if it's a complex question, you can just come up here and ask, but otherwise I could. <laughs> Thank you. Hey guys, yeah, I just want to go back to what I was saying about Ethereum. So we're talking about mythology and how much kilogram of CO2 transaction emits per, uh, a polygon transaction emits per transaction. Um, it seems so low for polygon and Ethereum is like many, many of those magnitudes more. So it sounds to me like, Maybe it'd be super interesting to just do this for Ethereum and actually Polygon maybe is just like peanuts on the side. Um, is there anything technically that prevents you from doing it on Ethereum? It sounds like you're just tracking an address and an ounce. So as long as your API on the web app hits Ether scan instead of Polygon scan, it works exactly the same, no? Or am I missing Precisely. something? Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Like I mean, I'm not sure what like how we answered this question formally, I think there's like two different ideas, either like bringing the token protocol and the three CO2s onto Ethereum and having like the offsetting natively happening on Ethereum integrated um, so that they can be triggered by Ethereum on-chain transactions, for example, um, or having it like via, yeah, I just want to offset my, like I'm on Polygon, I have some funds on Polygon and I want to, you know, I want to offset my transactions on Ethereum. So, so that would be yeah. perfectly fine with that, with that app. And that wouldn't need a lot of changes, I assume. Yeah, I think it's super, you yeah, just, just cloned the, the, the small contracts you have now. You say this one only tracks Ethereum addresses now, and then you're good to go, right? All of this can happen on Polygon, to can get some Polygon. You're just tracking transactions on Ethereum. And yeah, also, it's actually, exactly. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you bump it up and you say now it's 90 kilograms per transaction and actually you create huge demand for ECT all of a sudden. Because here we're, we're saying like it's, you know, a, a, a thousands of a BCT token. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we could add um, like a, the chain ID into the mapping, for example, so we don't even have to yeah. clone the contract. Uh, do you want to come up now, Sander, or once he's ready? Okay, cool, cool. Okay, yeah, we have time for the other question, if you still have it. Do you still have a question? Uh, no. Okay, cool. Do you guys have anything else? After the q and I think we're good on questions, but I think that um, Sander wanted to bring some of the uh, Coinbase people on to share the news in a couple of minutes. Uh, Alex, Marcel, do you guys have anything else? Um, no, nothing else. This is pretty much it. Cool. I think a couple of things I wanted to mention is we said that we launched the developer hub, but I don't know if the URL was actually shared, but you guys can go to developer.toucan.earth. Um, and do you want to actually go there now from your computer, uh, Alex, because you're already sharing screen? Developer. It'll just be easier. But Right. Cool. Yeah. So this is something that we also put together for all of you. Um, there's a lot more information about our developer hub. And um, links to documentation. We're going to have the roadmap up on here. 
we have some actual um, examples so you guys can basically get a direct link to the project that you just saw um, and a couple of the other projects that people have been working on um, beyond the Toucan team, like the uh, carbonized NFT and just some other links at the bottom, including links to jobs. Um, we are definitely hiring uh, a lot now, um, pretty much across the board, especially for software engineers. Um, and I'm specifically looking to hire. So if you're interested, just come and chat with me. Um, and I'll hand the mic over to Sander and some folks from Coinbase um, just to kind of make a little announcement, share some news. And Sanders are head of growth, I believe is your yeah, official yeah, title. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm, uh, more, I'm more on the growth side, but you know, I think the key focus for, for growth throughout 2022 20, is just helping builders build. We just want to create a flourishing ecosystem of projects uh, building around, around two camps. And so, uh, so related to that, we have some pretty exciting news. We have uh, two individuals from Coinbase giving here, Harrison and Trent. Um, and maybe would one of you mind just giving a, a quick intro to Coinbase Giving, and then we can uh, share some of the new developments? Yeah, sure. Actually, hey everybody. Um, so Coinbase Giving, thank you guys Coinbase's corporate philanthropy. Uh, we've pledged one percent of profits, equity, and employee time uh, to share with around the world. One of the big um, frames we use is the United States. And so there are so many United States related to climate and sustainability. So we're looking for any sort of put their forward solutions that advance your institution. We're super excited that two fans are right now. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're really excited here. Yesterday we just got news that we will be partnering up with Coinbase Giving here for builder grants. Over the next year, we have a $500,000 grant from Coinbase Giving uh, to help builders build. And so um, for projects building any, you know, at this intersection of crypto and climate, we want to help you. Uh, so within the next month or so, be on the lookout for uh, this to be publicly announced. Um, there will be a sort of application process where you can share the project that you're working on, what sort of resources you're looking for. And uh, the best projects will get resources provided from Toucan, perhaps some light design or technical resources, but uh, then also grant funding from Coinbase Giving. So really excited to share it. This is the first time it's been mentioned, um, but this is really the core group that we want to be speaking to. So uh, thank you all for your participation and uh, thank you to Coinbase Giving. I mean, this is, uh, we're just so excited. <laughs> Some reason you're done doing other projects and other blockchains, we actually do have developer grants for others as well. So you can just Google Coinbase like developer grants. Um, so our first preference is to go with Toucan. Second <laughs> preference, if for some reason it doesn't work out, please come talk to us and come to us. So, okay. Enjoy. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. Do you guys want to conclude it, uh, Alex or Marcel, or? Have you pretty much said all you wanted to say? Yeah, I, I pretty much cool. said all I wanted to say. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, maybe what, what are we doing now? Like, are there people in the room that want to, like, hack something together now and want some support? I mean, don't we have a Discord chat open now where we could give support? Yeah, we opened up a private Discord channel um, that I can make sure that everyone uh, gets invited to. Um, and... Um, how long will you guys be available to give support, just so everyone here knows? I'm here for at least one, two hours. Yeah, I could do one hour, one, one or one and a half. Okay, cool. Is there anyone who might be interested in continuing to hack on some stuff? Or? Okay, don't close the Zoom. Okay. Uh, right after we'll also have a discussion. Cool. Okay, I'll let, let you guys know if anyone ends up hacking on stuff. And if so, I'll definitely make sure they're in the Discord channel. Cool. But thanks. Cool. Well, All thanks right. so much, everyone. See, See you guys. guys. Bye bye.
encourage everyone to either come up with a or go have some snacks and go get some t-shirts and also check out the other workshops. Get some fresh air. Oh, yeah, actually. Cool. Um, uh, I did like uh, the 
Excellent.